Welcome to this Scorpio full moon message. There are three main themes. These three themes are most definitely playing out in each of our lives at this very moment and will continue to play out for the next month or until the next full moon. So it's very important to listen to this message because these energies will be affecting you for the next month and will continue to unfold and play out in your life. Let's get into the three different themes. I just want to first introduce myself. My name is Kata. I'm an intuitive life coach and an energy healer, and I do YouTube videos about astrology and spirituality and links in the description box below for all my different services and offerings. The waitlist for my Ascension Accelerating Program, Becoming 2.0, is also now open, and you can check that out as well. So the themes of this Scorpio full moon. My gosh, let's talk about it. It is intense. Uh, it's powerful. It's, <laughs> it's like a lightning bolt is what I keep seeing. Uh, it's, it's just bringing in so much change, so much transformation, but most of all, because Scorpio is definitely uh, a sign of transformation, but it's a sign of depth. It's a sign of intensity, and it's also a sign of uh, bringing in emotional experiences, like deep emotional experiences. So you might be finding yourself very deeply enthralled in your emotions. And, and I'm seeing like a bucket with the water, like sloshing around in the bucket, like just having this really intense emotional experience at this time. Now the energy did peak yesterday, but it's going to continue playing out for the next month or so. So definitely come back to this message and have another listen if you feel like you need a reminder of what these energies are all about or how it's going to be playing out in your life. The key to working with this full moon energy is to actually feel your feelings. Scorpio wants you to really get into the depth of your emotion. Like really go deep and feel and allowing yourself to feel everything that wants to surface at this time, tuning in to what actually wants to surface at this time and allowing yourself to cry, allowing yourself to release if there are any uh, peaks within your emotional field that really need release. So in order to transform, we must be willing to feel. You have to feel the uncomfortable. You have to feel everything that is within you, especially when it comes to suppressed feelings, uh, suppressed energies, uh, anything that you really have not acknowledged, haven't been able to, or didn't want to acknowledge is definitely going to be rising with great intensity at this time within you. And you're going to feel it. You're going to need outlets. You're going to need to give yourself the opportunity to sit with this stuff and just let it out, let it go. So slow down, look inward, hold space for any, any energy that wants to surface at this time. And it's very important that you don't analyze your feelings. You cannot analyze it with logic. It won't make any sense to you. It also won't work. So you can't be logical about feelings. Feelings just need to be felt. Don't analyze them. Okay. The, the whole point here is to really just connect and sort of figure out why am I feeling what I'm feeling and don't even judge it. So don't go into judgment of whether it's a positive or a negative that you're feeling what you're feeling. It just is. Okay. So coming into that acceptance of like, I just feel what I feel right now and I'm just going to allow that. I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to categorize it. I'm not going to put it into any kind of a box or label it good or bad. I'm just going to allow and then see what happens and let it flow. It is also time to face the present moment. So this is a time to stop in your tracks, let go of all of your distractions and really confront reality. There is a massive, massive lesson here around <laughs> confronting reality. The first theme for this Scorpio full moon, which I forgot to mention, is actually the discomfort of facing reality. So there will be an experience of having to face reality and just the the different discomforts, the different things that this is going to bring up within you, you know, that that really needs to be faced. And this is a massive reality check for all of us in our lives, you know, individually and of course collectively, because we all need a reality check about something in our lives, right? About something that isn't working, something that we're not doing 
in a good way or just something that we're not willing to look at to change to shift to actually be able to transform ourselves this is a time to get really okay with that like just be okay with the discomfort like yeah okay i, I really got to get real about certain things and uh, I don't like it, maybe, and you don't have to like it. But if you are willing to just work with this energy and allow it, then you're going to go really, really far. It's like transformative. Like, remember, the sign of Scorpio is all about transformation. It's like death and rebirth. It is ruled by the planet Pluto, which is death and rebirth, right? So Scorpio really wants you to allow something to die now, allow something to really fall away and to rebirth yourself into this new being, into a significantly better version of yourself, because there's a lot of upgrading that a lot of people need to do. There's a lot of um, personal issues that I've noticed in people that they just like refuse to look at, they refuse to acknowledge within themselves. And there's, there's this massive imbalance of ego and spirit where the ego is constantly overruling the spirit and overruling the heart and not allowing the heart and the spirit to blossom and to be the, the one in control, right, of your life, but rather the ego stepping up constantly and shoving the heart, the, the heart's desire and the spirit's desire out of the way. And that is what we are getting a big reality check on at this time. So it's like our facades are being stripped away. There's just no, there's no faking it anymore. <laughs> there's so many levels of fake that are now falling away that we just don't have an option to, to entertain any longer. You know, we can't lie to ourselves without knowing that we're lying to ourselves, right? It's not possible. And under this full moon, like you just will not be able to lie to yourself or actually to another person either. The truth is, is very much erupting out of us at this time so just be mindful of that be mindful that uh how you kind of express yourself or what you say you know just to make sure that you are expressing truth uh and and you know what it's like you don't need to filter your truth say whatever you feel genuinely in your heart but just be mindful that you're not uh trampling on somebody else's emotions as you're maybe expressing yourself so just staying aware of that Anything that we've been sweeping under the rug or pretending doesn't exist is going to be coming out now, exploding out of the bag uh, to be seen. This is something you might have to acknowledge. So emotional baggage release, okay, is like a big theme of this Scorpio full moon. Emotions that we would rather not deal with, subconscious beliefs, biases, and suppressed feelings that we try to project onto others are all going to surface in a very, very obvious way right now. So be self-aware, be tuned into that, and just know that everything that you have not been dealing with, everything that you have not wanted to deal with, you're going to now have to deal with it. And that's the truth. And, and you know, when it comes to spiritual work, and I talk to clients about this all the time, it's like, why run? Why run from yourself? Like you're only running from yourself. We are all always running from ourselves. We're not running from anybody else or anything else but ourselves, right? So can you stop running and can you face what you need to face and just do what needs to be done? Because the only way to resolve your emotional baggage, the only way to empty the emotional baggage is to take a look at what's inside and be willing to empty it one by one, piece by piece, acknowledging, yes, this this is here, and now I need to look at it, I need to feel it, so I probably need to have a big cry about it, and then let it go. And then it's done. The only way to spiritual ascension is through the storm. You can't go around the storm, you can't go above the storm, you have to go through the storm. Now, this of course is making us very uncomfortable <laughs> while giving us the opportunity for profound growth. So yes, it is extremely uncomfortable sometimes to go through. And sometimes it's not as uncomfortable as you might assume. So let yourself just move through the process without, you know, freaking out over it or, or denying or uh, without resisting it and move through. You might be pleasantly surprised at how maybe an afternoon of just sitting with yourself and looking at your stuff might really, really shift you into a more healed version of yourself. Would that not be worth it? Uh -huh. I think so. 
Scorpio points out what is underneath the surface still controlling you, even if you don't acknowledge it. Okay, so this is a big like red flag when it comes to your ego and all of our egos, right? Our egos are always the ones that are wanting to sit in the driver's seat and drive the bus of our life. But it is time and it has been time and I've been saying this for quite some time now that we really need to allow our spirits and our hearts to guide and to drive the bus okay so otherwise you become a puppet right and you know who the puppet master is your ego and your subconscious mind the subconscious mind is what constantly controls everything that you do everything that you say everything that you are because the subconscious mind is this accumulation of information from birth, from the time that you were born and everything that you saw, that you witnessed, that you experienced, good, bad, ugly, all of it is stored in the subconscious mind. This is why the first seven years of life are so incredibly important that we provide a safe, comfortable, loving environment for our children in the first seven years, especially, I mean, through their whole life, hopefully. Um, or for as long as they need us, right? But in the first seven years, it is vital. So think back to your first seven years. How was that? Did you feel safe, supported, loved, cared for, nurtured? Did you get enough hugs and kisses? Did you get enough uh, attention that you needed? Did your parents play with you? You know, these are all things that are uh, definitely surfacing now with the Scorpio full moon. And it's surfacing because this Scorpio uh, full moon also wants us to release all of our childhood baggage, right? That's that's the programming that's uh, laying dormant in the subconscious mind that may be sort of erupting or coming forth at this time, right? And so there's this need to look at those childhood wounds that you have literally spent probably your whole life uh, sweeping under the rug. It's time to break through the limitations that confine you. And these limitations come from the subconscious mind, which is filled with everything I just explained. Okay. So make sure that you do this work so that you can cut those strings and allow your spirit to become the guide instead of your ego being the puppet master of your life. So when you face your deepest fears, your triggers, your beliefs, and condition patterns, you cut those strings. That is the way that you cut them. And you free yourself in that moment. And you no longer have this background program constantly controlling everything that you do, everything that you are, because you're free from that. This is Scorpio full moon is saying like free yourself from your past, from any trauma, any pain, any um, underlying stuff that you may not even be aware of or conscious of. But if you sit and do some work and, and dive in a little bit deeper into your past and look at some of this stuff, that's where the magic is. That's where you get to reassess and look at everything. I mean, think about how much you've developed and grown and changed as a person since you were a kid. So now with your adult eyes and with the level of maturity and awareness that you have, you have this ability to look back at your past and be like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Like my parents really kind of did the best they could. And, and perhaps maybe they sucked at parenting or maybe they just weren't very loving or very kind or didn't necessarily provide the things I needed. But they did the best they could. And, you know, I realize now that they are at a level of consciousness that they were at, like they couldn't be better because if they were more conscious, then they would have been better. Right. So when you are able to look at those old things within yourself with these like fresh eyes, now you have a really good chance of healing all that stuff and letting it go and moving into the energy of forgiveness and and compassion and understanding. And in that moment, you set yourself free. So this is important work right now. Okay. Transformation begins with confronting what is occurring right now. Karmic themes may be resurfacing at this time. So there could be karmic situations, people, places, and things that are coming back up around uh, for review, to reassess, to have another go at it. We are still in Mercury retrograde for another day or so, and then we're going to be in shadow. 
period still for another couple of weeks. So Mercury retrograde will still sort of play itself out uh, for a little while longer and will bring those past connections, past situations, uh, anything that you need to kind of learn from more or further or uh, anything that you need to wrap up, tie up and complete at this time is going to pop back up in your life or can pop back up in your life. Now, Scorpio reminds us that we are magicians and healers. And every single one of us is actually because we can all we all have this ability to heal others with our words. And sometimes it could just be super simple, kind words or a smile. Right. So we are all healers in our own way. And we are all magicians. We all have this magical ability to create an absolutely amazing life for ourselves. Right. It's just about awareness. The more awareness you have, the more you're able to use your magician powers and, and healing powers and the more you become an embodied version of that. And, and Scorpio right now wants you to become this more powerful embodied magician and healer in your own life. You can transform any energy, emotion or behavior, turn darkness into light and tension into relaxation. And that is the magical ability and the powerful ability that we all have. The second theme of this Scorpio full moon is shadow work and triggers. So I kind of briefly touched on shadow work a little bit just now, uh, but your shadow is, is something that you need to understand. And a lot of people don't know how to do shadow work because they don't understand it. So I just want to break it down just very simply, very quickly. Shadow, your shadow is composed of emotions that you couldn't process when they were felt and experienced. So when some type of traumatic or very unexpected sort of devastating or even just a very uh, intense emotion that hits you hard, uh, when you have an experience like that, you can't process that in the moment, right? It's like information overload and your mind just starts going crazy. The ego is analyzing the shit out of it and your heart is just, you know, feeling contracted and, and perhaps broken in that moment. So it's like, you don't even know <laughs> what to do with that information. So these emotions that you don't know what to do with and that you don't know how to process get trapped within the subconscious mind and actually get trapped within the body, the emotional body and the physical body. Uh, so like within the layers of your energy field. And so repressed feelings become this way that you are cutting yourself off from them, right? When you start to repress your feelings, you cut yourself off from those feelings. You kind of compartmentalize it and you're like, I can't deal with this right now. I don't even know where to begin. Down you go. I'm just going to like, you know, chin up, keep going, forward facing. Let's move on. And a lot of people do this. A lot of people do this on a regular basis. For some people, this is like their go-to habit where they just something intense happens in their life. They can't deal or they won't deal. And then they just shove it down and they're like, nope, we're just going to keep powering through and keep moving through. And you know what? That's like the worst thing that you can do because this is what accumulates all that lumpiness under that carpet I was talking about earlier, right? This is what keeps you stuck. It's what keeps you uh, depressed, right? Depression is a sign and an indication of a lot of suppressed emotions that you just haven't been willing to look at. Now, this Scorpio full moon is saying, uh, here it is, and you need to look at it, and <laughs> you need to really acknowledge what's under there and what you've been shoving down. And I think for some people, it's going to come up in a very unexpected way, in a very powerful way, where all of a sudden you're just like, oh my God, what the hell is happening? I can't stop crying. I have <laughs> this constant feeling of like overwhelming emotions, and I, I don't even know how to like deal with it. And that's okay. You just got to sit with that. So this Scorpio full moon is going to push this up out of us because it wants us to heal. It wants us to go through this death and rebirth process. It wants us to move into a higher version of ourselves. You can't be in a high place if you are heavy with baggage. I hope that makes sense. So your shadow contains all of the emotions that you thought were bad, that you labeled as bad, and that made you feel unlovable or unsafe in any kind of a way. So it's where you store everything that you can't face about yourself. That's what your shadow contains. 
And the more that you run from yourself, the bigger your shadow gets, essentially. And the more you're going to operate out of shadow constantly. Shadow says things sometimes that we would rather not admit. So this is when you just blurt out something and then you're like, oh my God, I wish I could just suck that back. <laughs> and it also makes us do things that we regret later. So anything that you do that you end up regretting, that's a very clear indication that, that you were operating out of your shadow when you did that. Or when you said something hurtful perhaps to somebody and you didn't, you didn't really want to hurt their feelings or you didn't want to blurt something out like that. That's also an indication that you are operating out of your shadow, not your higher self. Now, to begin looking at your shadow, the very first thing you have to look at is your triggers. When you look at your triggers, you're going to know, have a very, very clear indication of what type of shadow work you need to do. And this is the beauty of shadow work. So triggers are behaviors in another person that cause you to feel irritated, envious, jealous, or hurt somehow. Okay, so when someone is like irritating you, frustrating you, rubbing you the wrong way, that's a trigger. So what you deny within yourself, you will always see in others. This is how triggers work. And this is why we get irritated off of other people sometimes and annoyed with other people. Uh, because there's some part of you that connects to that exact situation, that exact way that person is expressing themselves or whatever they're doing that's bothering you or annoying you, you are denying that within yourself. If you deny anger in yourself, for example, you will feel super triggered by someone you perceive as angry. So if you are denying anger within yourself and somebody else is freaking out, you are going to get so triggered like crazy because you don't allow yourself to get angry or you're not like you're suppressing uh, anger towards someone or something. And that unhealed anger, that unprocessed, um, suppressed anger that, you know, like wants to erupt out of you. Every time you keep shoving it down, as soon as somebody gets angry around you, you're going to be triggered. So don't do that. <laughs> get on a mountaintop, go, go to the lake. I don't know, go somewhere, scream your head off. It's like, get these, emotions out of yourself the frustration the anger anything that you feel is really like bubbling beneath the surface right now allow that shit to come forth and really really move through you in a very powerful way okay and you can't judge this this is something like okay i'm doing this right now to release it so that i can eliminate this trigger and and stop being triggered by angry people shadow work also deals with positive emotions that we may have cut ourselves off from so in this case uh, if you cut yourself off from feeling happy, content, and fulfilled, then you'll find yourself being very triggered by happy people. And I've seen this play out before too. And, and at one point, it was something that I even experienced where I noticed myself getting triggered by happy people. This was a long time ago, probably in my 20s, because I've definitely healed that now. But if you are finding yourself getting really triggered by people that you perceive as like happy, content, they got their stuff together and everything in their life is going well, because you're not allowing yourself to experience those things. And we always do this to ourselves. Nobody does it to us, right? We are always shoving our own feelings down. Nobody shoves it down for us. This is a massive lesson. Scorpio is delivering this lesson about can you allow yourself to heal even the most painful wound that you carry at this moment so that you can turn that into wisdom and recognize that you actually have power and control over this and, and that you don't have to have triggers, that you can get rid of your triggers as long as you continue to empty yourself on a regular basis. And that wisdom makes you more resilient to navigate any storm with ease. This is what resilience is right? We become resilient through dealing with our shadow side and through doing shadow work. So confront your deepest emotions, sit with them, acknowledge them, and give them space to exist. Allow them to exist. Stop shoving it down, ignoring it, pushing it away from your, yourself as if it was something bad. It's not bad. It's just needing to be healed. That's it. So the old familiar solid ground under our feet is gone now. So there's this like turbulence, like, like I 
sort of get the sense of like the ground shaking underneath of us. And, and that shaking, that turbulence is, is trying to shake loose all of these, um, I, want, I see them as like little rocks in the body that have been lodged in certain spots. And those are now needing to be shaken loose and needing to be, uh, it, it's like kidney stones, right? The way the kidney stone will travel down a line, uh, the, the, the ureters, like the kidney lines and stuff. And then it has to um, eventually move out all the way down through the bladder so that you can actually pee it out. Right. So it's like the same kind of thing. It's like you need to dislodge these rocks within you now and allow them to move through, which is painful. Aren't kidney stones painful? Yes. <laughs> so we are in transition in multiple ways and on multiple levels. There's so much change happening within us. And it's like uprooting. I'm hearing like uprooting type of change. Like there's so much that is being uprooted that now, you know, needs to be pulled plucked so that new roots and new seeds can can start to form roots within you and blossom into something beautiful so be kind to your body it is doing its best to keep you uh, balanced right now it's doing its best to navigate these energies to upgrade and to deal with the density within us breaking up Right. And so there are symptoms of this when the density starts to break up within us as we do more and more shadow work. And as we get into healing more and more then that density elevating out of us and, and our frequency becoming lighter and more free is is a lot of work for the physical body. So support your physical body in a lot of different ways right now to help this process along. Now, the third and final theme for this Scorpio full moon is present moment and personal power. So this Scorpio full moon is really calling us to be in the present moment, to be here in the now with ourselves. Stop being in the past, which is why the shadow work needs to be done so you can get out of the cycles of the past and stop being in the future that is giving you anxiety and, and you know, making your brain go wild with all kinds of crazy thoughts about the future. It's about really anchoring into the present moment. Be here, right here, right now. How does, how does everything feel right here, right now? In this present moment, everything is perfect. My roof isn't falling down. You know, there's no tornadoes outside. Like everything is just beautiful and blissful and perfect. And I have every reason to be super grateful and in gratitude for this present moment. So it's getting into that vibe and anchoring into that so that you can really start living more free. Like the present moment is freeing. When I think about certain past situations, then I start going down a rabbit hole of, of maybe some negativity of anything that's left unhealed. But it's like, I don't even go down those past rabbit holes anymore because I don't need to. I've healed those. I've looked at them. I've dissected them. I sat with them. I cried with them like I did. I acknowledged them. I just allowed them to be there. I allowed them to be present in my life. And so therefore, I am in the present moment more and more and more. And this is a work in progress for the rest of your life. Believe me, we all have to work on this continuously, right? Because we all have egos and our egos and uh, not only our egos, but actually distractions will often pull us right into different directions. So it's important to be very strong within yourself so that you can stay anchored in the present moment and then you will be happy always. Yes, that's possible. Scorpio and Taurus's low sides. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the negative aspects. And I'm talking about Taurus because the sun just moved into the sign of Taurus as well. So that is obviously kickstarting and, and, and bringing in its, its, uh, Taurian energy into this mix. The negative aspects are that they bring us away from our power and place it outside of ourselves. So this is where you are seeking external validation. There are all kinds of different ways in which we place our power outside of ourselves. We give our power away to so many different things when you think about it, to ads, to other people's opinions, to something you saw on TV, to movies, to songs, to all kinds of things, right? We're constantly giving our power away without even realizing that we do. As soon as something like really sucks you in, in a way, and maybe you're not fully like aware 
that that thing may not be good for you that that is sucking you in that's you giving your power away in that moment so another negative aspect is that we don't allow ourselves to feel we avoid our true feelings when we are operating in the lower aspects of scorpio and taurus Another negative aspect is that we distract ourselves with external preoccupations leading to anxiety and obsession. So this comes back to the whole giving your power away to those external preoccupations, you know, and then that ends up causing all kinds of turmoil within you because now you're not in the present moment and you're certainly not in your power. We can also end up uh, finding clever ways to avoid the internal work that is needed to transform ourselves and our lives. And I know lots of people that do this. It's a very common thing. You know, people will often look to entertainment, to videos, movies, and Netflix, and all kinds of different things. They will do everything and anything just to not have to sit with their stuff and not have to face it, right? Not have to do that internal work, that shadow work, and, and looking at those shadow aspects within yourself and acknowledging and accepting them there's a tendency for people to run from themselves, right? Another aspect is that we blame others, we project our feelings onto them and ignore our internal cries for help. Hmm. So just as I read through this, I want you to kind of tune in with yourself and ask yourself, how much of these do I do? Do I do these things? You know, and to some degree, we have all done these things, okay? So there's nothing to be ashamed of, especially when it comes to shadow work, right? And this is a part of shadow work is, is to kind of look at this right now within yourself and acknowledge whether you do these things or not. So do you blame others? Do you project your feelings onto others? And I see this all the time, like angry people that, you know, start freaking out on somebody for like next to no reason, that is projection. That's emotional projection. That, that means that person has a lot of anger issues that they're suppressing within themselves. Some people have really strong triggers. So it's like the slightest little thing will set off their trigger because they've suppressed for so long uh, and, and so intensely. And then they'll just kind of lose it on somebody else, right? And then, of course, ignoring your own internal cries. <laughs> you project your feelings because you're ignoring your internal cries. So it's like, you know, what is your soul crying for, longing for, desiring and, and saying like, please give this to me, please acknowledge this within me. You know, what are those things? Check in with yourself. We also mistrust our intuition and instead look outside ourselves for validation of our self-worth. Very, very common theme with the Scorpio Taurus in their negative aspects. And it brings this out a lot in a lot of people. We may also obsess over money loved ones and our place in the world and the whole our place in the world thing is very prominent i found i think a lot of people feel very alone very isolated and they are looking for their place in the world and they don't they don't feel like they belong they don't feel like they fit in they feel like they're just sort of an alien among humans like they're just so different uh, and if that's something that you identify with, then that's something that you need to look at within yourself as well, because that, that comes from shadow as well. That comes from a lack of self-acceptance, actually. You may also sabotage your intentions to build your vision. So anytime that you are sabotaging yourself, that would be the Scorpion Taurian uh, low aspects coming out within you. It's what you are embodying in that moment. So look at your shadows around self-worth, fear, inner reliance, and overall power right now okay how you use your power what you give your power away to you know what kind of self-worth issues do you have do you allow yourself to be happy do you not allow yourself to be happy do you resent other people that are happy you know do you get triggered easily what are your triggers pay attention to all of this right now write this stuff out for yourself you're gonna get such a world of information from it's like you're gonna understand yourself so much deeper so much better as a result of doing this Anxiety and thinking about future scenarios instead of staying in the moment is very common also for most people. So that's why this Scorpio full moon is asking us, can you be present? Can you stop looking backwards? Can you stop looking forwards too far? And can you just be right here right now and enjoy and allow yourself to actually be happy right here in this present moment? Approaching the future in fear, thinking that we might lose everything, 
is another theme, another lower aspect of Scorpio and Taurus, because Taurus very much rules material things, especially money, finances, um, uh, possessions like house, car, you know, anything that's of, of bigger value, assets of any kind. So are you approaching your future with fear? Do you have this sort of background anxiety about your future? Notice that within yourself at this time. And are you afraid that you might lose everything in the future? And if you are, then I just want to remind you here that your most valuable asset is you, is yourself. So if anything, stuff is stuff. Stuff is, is things that we can, we can accumulate again. It's things that we can have in our lives again. What you should be afraid of is losing yourself. Because you are that master, that healer that I was talking about earlier, right? Only you have the power to go from zero to hero. So losing yourself should be your biggest concern. Losing yourself to other people, giving away your power to other people and not fully allowing yourself to be who you are. That is your biggest asset, you. So make sure that you don't lose yourself in the world, in world events, in other people's lives. Stay focused, stay present within your life and within your value system, what you want to create for yourself at this time and how you want to live your life and experience it. Getting triggered by others who appear successful, feeling jealous or envious is also a common theme for people that don't allow themselves to be happy. So check in with yourself, see if you do that. Easily getting triggered when issues come up around security. So feeling unsafe in the world, right? Tying back into that financial safety, security, and just foundationally having safety and security within your life. And if you have any of these issues, I'm going to really, really recommend that you get root chakra healing. For women in particular, the bottom three chakras, the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus are the most important chakras to work on energy centers because those energy centers get most blocked for women, right? Because women often feel very unsafe, very insecure in the world, right? So it's it's different between men and women. I've seen and I've worked with plenty of men who also had imbalances in those bottom three chakras. But for women, mostly, it can be really quite out of whack, especially if you had a, the type of childhood where safety and security was not a common thing or wasn't a regular thing. And another important piece here that I want to talk about is that you can get stuck in transformational looping. Transformational looping is when you just kind of keep moving through this process of I'm transforming myself, I'm transforming myself. Right. And you never actually accept your perfection. You never accept who you truly are and how far you've come. Right. So it's like you're looking for the next shift that you need to make in your life, but never actually appreciating what you have already accomplished. It's like a spiritual transformation trap. And in the spiritual communities, you know, we talk a lot about transformation, but at some points you also need to stop and just appreciate where you are. And I do this actually regularly for myself. It's very, very important that you acknowledge that, wow, I am so proud of myself. I've come so far. I've done so much work on myself. I've looked at so many aspects of my shadow and I sat with it and I've worked with it and I've healed it and I've moved out of those states of being and I've come so far. And it's like, acknowledging that recognizing that and reminding yourself that that took work and it took a lot of work to do that is really really important it super boosts your confidence it really makes you realize how good you are right and that you're really worthy of a wonderful life and that how powerful you are it, it really puts you in your power in that moment it, it reminds you of like wow, like I got this, like I can do this. I can do this thing called life. So if you are someone that is looping in this energy of, you know, build again and transform again and do it better next time and like go for it again, then that means you're not acknowledging. That means that you are struggling with self-worth issues and confidence issues. Because when you, when you become really confident in yourself, you just acknowledge how powerful you are and how much you've already accomplished. Now, Scorpio is the rising Phoenix in astrology. It is considered the rising Phoenix. 
But sometimes the phoenix doesn't necessarily need, need to rise. She just needs to fly. Okay. And so Scorpio full moon here is reminding us that, you know, you don't need to be the constant rising phoenix rising from those ashes over and over again on loop. But instead, can you just let yourself fly and soar and move forward in a confident new way? So take control of the stories that you tell yourself, okay? Because fundamentally, everything that goes on in your head is what is determining your future. It is what is constantly setting the tone for where you feel you're at in your life. So don't let your stories control you any longer. The Scorpio is saying, you know, cut that stuff away. Cut those old stories away and start telling yourself new stories. Tell yourself stories about abundance. Rewrite that story. You are the main character. So just rewrite that story and start acting out a new version of yourself. Okay, so this is the part where you get your pen out and I'm going to mention some journal questions to ponder upon for this Scorpio full moon. Question number one, have I become preoccupied with things outside of me as a means to distract myself from what's within? Have I felt obsessed about resources and untrusting of my ability to create abundance. This is Taurus asking you this one. And feel free to pause between questions so that you have time to write them down. Have I looked to others for security instead of owning my power? Have I forgotten my connection with the universe? Have you forgotten that you are always supported? And all you need to do is tune in to that energy and sit quietly and meditate. And praying is the act of asking and meditation is the act of listening. So have compassion and courage for yourself when you are answering these questions. Make sure that you are really honest when you are answering these questions. Don't hold back. Release what you can during this full moon and know that just becoming aware of these energies within yourself is already the process of transmutation and is a catalyst for transformation. So just becoming aware, that's why honesty is going to serve you really, really well. And just remember that it all starts with your willingness to look deeply at yourself as you stay grounded in the present moment. Have zero judgment zero resistance of you know what is dismantling what is falling apart within you at this time or within your life don't judge it just allow it to fall allow things to to fall apart especially if something's been crumbling for quite a while then allow it and break away whatever isn't working and perhaps has never worked isn't even worth the struggle those are the things that you now need to let go so enjoy the journey of learning about your whole self because that's what the Scorpio full moon is asking us to learn about our whole selves. And I'm going to leave you with just a couple of self care tips because this is going to be very helpful for you as you are moving through this very intense journey of shadow work and self discovery and uh, coming back into your power. So let's support that with proper self care. So a theme of being under resourced for far too long in terms of friendship, love, community, support, and encouragement is also playing out at this time. So one of the very first self-care practices that I'm going to recommend is to make it a priority to bring new connections into your life, to allow these things back in your life. If you have been one of those people that I, I identified earlier about not allowing yourself to be happy, then this is the time for you to start opening that door and really allowing new experiences, new people. It's like there's a rise of, of tribal energy where, you know, meeting our tribe and coming together now with our tribe and with communities that we really resonate with is, is a huge theme that's playing out. So there's this massive desire in the collective energy field that I'm picking up on where people are longing to connect with each other. So allow those connections to take place and to happen. Allow them in, be open to them. Don't be shy. Keep working on yourself so that you're not getting triggered so that you can really move all that baggage out of the way and clear some space for some really fun, amazing new experiences to come into your life. And you have to do this with like full authenticity, okay? Full authenticity, meaning that you are only allowing in 
what you truly, truly feel connected to allow in. Okay? What feels really in alignment with you. Now, it is time to create your unique combination of sanity tools, okay? And so jot some of these down or just keep them in mind. Invest in growth practices, okay? Growth practices would be like the shadow work I mentioned, journaling, for example, reading. So reading more books, especially self-help books that relate to any issue that you're dealing with specifically will be very helpful during this uh, next month. Meditating, of course, so remember, meditation is the act of listening to that higher guidance, uh, writing, uh, writing anything out or just writing in general will be very, very helpful. Gardening, walking in nature. I know I've been getting out in my own garden and preparing the garden beds and stuff for all kind of plant, planting all kinds of new seeds. Uh, online learning, teaching, coaching. Whatever speaks to you specifically, again, authenticity needs to be in the forefront of all of these decisions. Whatever you're excited to do and are interested in trying and would and feel like would be fun for you to try, those are the things to get into and do as self-care. Okay, so that is my Scorpio full moon message. There is a lot of work ahead of us, I feel, as a collective, but I also know that these energies are supporting that work in a really, really major way. And the people that are willing to do this type of work are going to be very, very handsomely rewarded in all kinds of different ways, opportunities, good luck, prosperity, all kinds of things coming into your life. Love. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Hit a like on your way out. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Take care.